Hi, we are going to talk about Ethereum Classic with the ticker symbol ETC. It's currently at market rank 22, so it's the 22nd largest cryptocurrency in terms of market cap. Its market dominance is around 0.4%. Now, is Ethereum Classic a good investment right now? Should you buy it? Should you hold it? In order to answer this question, we will not only look at the Ethereum Classic to US dollar chart, but we will also make a comparison to the regular Ethereum. And last but not least, we will look at Ethereum Classic valued in regular Ethereum. And that's this chart over here. I will tell you why this chart actually matters. Now let's jump in. This is the Ethereum to US dollar chart. And when I look at this chart, what is very, very striking is this really large volume that happened recently, this really large trading volume. So in all of Ethereum Classics history, there has never been a week where the token was traded that heavily. And that's a really impressive outlier, right? And so what does this actually mean? Is it a good or a bad sign that we had this price rally that coincided with this large volume over here? So the way I look at trading volume, the way I see trading volume is that it's basically an indication for the token changing hands and for basically establishing a new reference price. And very often what happens when trading volume is high, that we are on the verge of changing the current momentum. So just look at this historically and you can see this in many charts. The trading volume here was increasing, the price was increasing as well. And once we hit a really large spike in volume, we see that the general price momentum turns around. So we basically see a lot of people that maybe bought in over here that are taking profits, new investors coming in, and those new investors, they now have this new reference price here, right? And so, and so they basically bought with the assumption over here that there's positive momentum and that this momentum will continue. But when the price doesn't grow as quickly anymore, those people over here are in losses, right? And they have a potentially shorter time horizon. And so that means when prices fall, they're likely to continue to fall. And you see this kind of pattern also the other way around, right? When prices fall and then we get a really large spike in volume that coincides with a stronger than usual price movement. So in this case, we were falling and then we were falling way faster with higher than usual trading volume. Then again, we see a potential turnaround in prices because now people that bought over here have this as a reference price and they can take quite a bit of fluctuations. So when you buy here at such a level, you're basically catching a falling knife, right? You're expecting almost that it might go down further, but over the long haul, you're thinking it might turn out well. So you have a longer time horizon when you buy during falling prices than when you buy during rising prices. So whenever there is high volume during falling prices, I also see this potentially as a bottoming of a market. And so you can see this also here in shorter time frames. trading volume here goes up. So let's zoom in. It was very low the weeks before. Then suddenly we got this big spike that coincides with a big price increase. And then again, a turnaround in the price action. So this tells me potentially that this recent price peak over here was probably not a positive thing for Ethereum Classic. And we can already see this, right? The price has decreased quite a bit from the peak to now. We are looking at a loss of 64%. So when would it be a good time to buy again? I think it's when the volumes pick up again, but currently they are very low. So we get this extended price decrease while there's very little attention on the token. And that's not a good sign, right? This sell-off over here happens from people that bought in at the peak. A lot of investors got this here as their reference price. When you look at any crypto chart, you very often see these trend reversals during high trading volumes. Let's, for example, look at Bitcoin just quickly. So this is a price chart of Bitcoin on a logarithmic scale over the last roughly four years, four to five years. And when we look at this picture, when we see very high trading volumes, we see that those increases in trading volume, they coincided with a turnaround in the price, right? We were bearish in this market. We dropped in the last bear market in 2018 around 80%. And with that drop came decreasing trading volumes. But once the volume spiked up, that's where we roughly got our bottom in the market. And let's look at the subsequent bull run that happened, where we basically made a 3x from the bottom to this roughly 11k point. And this week here basically had double the trading volume of all the weeks before. Once the trading volume was higher, we did see that the bull run was at least temporarily interrupted. And then of course the corona crash over here 
very extended volume suddenly in this week. And this week here especially was the turnaround that then started off this big bull run. So this theory seems to somewhat work. Whenever there is high trading volume, momentum tends to turn around. Now here's again the Ethereum classic chart. The problem with looking at altcoins with respect to the US dollar is that we get a lot of noise from the general market baked into the price. The reason why you're buying altcoins is probably not to in general just get crypto exposure, but it's rather to outperform the market, right? Ethereum Classic is only 0.4% of the overall crypto market. It's a relatively small coin. And as such, it's inherently more risky. Higher market cap assets are in general seen as less risky because they're also less volatile. Lower market cap assets should compensate for this increased risk with potentially more return. And so when you're looking at your altcoin, what's important is you have to look at relative performance. It doesn't make sense just to look at the chart based in US dollars because you do get things such as the corona crash in the chart that are not specific to the altcoin. So you basically want to remove the general crypto price movements from that chart and you just want to see how much am I outperforming because that's the determinant of buying or holding that coin. And so what you see over here is now the price of Ethereum Classic in Ethereum. Now why in Ethereum and why not in Bitcoin? The more common thing to do is to look at the altcoin price in terms of Bitcoin. The reason is that Bitcoin and Ethereum are two quite different assets, right? Bitcoin is bought for the long term always. It's basically dollar cost averaging into the market. It's regarded as virtual gold. Transaction fees are high. Transaction speeds are slow. But there's a lot of price history. There's a lot of branding around regular Bitcoin. And so people just buy it and hold it through any bear market for potentially many, many years. Now, Ethereum is a bit different, right? Ethereum is used for trading, not just to go in and out of Ethereum, but also to exchange Ethereum for other coins, for other ERC20 tokens, for any other altcoins. So you've got much more movement and much more direct application of the Ethereum blockchain. And so that's much closer to altcoins, right? You have active traders in the Ethereum market. Average holding durations are much lower. And so I'm a fan of basically comparing apples to apples and using Ethereum as a proxy for what the active crypto market is doing and so and so any altcoin should outperform ethereum over the long term and so i think if you're holding an altcoin it should over the long term outperform ethereum because ethereum inherently is less risky it has a higher market cap it has lower volatility and so when we look now at this chart at the ethereum classic to ethereum chart that's basically the ethereum classic price in us dollars divided by the Ethereum price in US dollars. When we look at this chart, it's in general trending downwards, right? But how much of a down movement is that actually? The beginning of this chart is 2016. And if you just look at relative underperformance, we are looking at 85% losses versus Ethereum. Now, that being said, we did have a rally recently, right? That rally was a 3.5x. So maybe there's a way to use these kind of movements, right? They are not insignificant. We can make like more than 100% on those kind of movements if you time them right. So one way to attempt timing those trades, those relative over and under valuations, is by using the RSI, the relative strength indicator. And so that's this white line over here. The way to get this is when you're on tradingview.com, just click here on this F and then enter RSI. And there you go. Double click on this and then you get this chart over here. Now this is the RSI on the weekly chart. And what I like to do in general with indicators is I try to adjust the parameters in a way that they suit best this particular asset. So what you can see is when you double click on the indicator, you can adjust the inputs. And so here with length, we basically have now the RSI based on 14 weeks. And so you can toy around with this parameter. And when we reduce the length of the indicator, we can see that we get more spikes to the upside and to the downside. And what we want to achieve is basically getting good buying and selling signals. So say here would have been a good selling signal. So we want this indicator to just spike and cross this overbought line. And then the same should hold true whenever we go below. Now we can also adjust the bounce over here. 
the overbought and oversold bound. So let's just do that. And when we look at this picture like that, we do see that relatively speaking, we are still very high, right? So, so when you're thinking about buying this dip here, you are very likely to be too early. The RSI says so, but also as we've talked about before, the volumes are still very low. So you want to look out for high trading volumes, a relatively low RSI, and then would be a good time to buy the dip. But at this point in time, I see Ethereum Classic to be too risky. Simply because the long-term sentiment is negative, we are trending down quite heavily over the long term. We don't see a lot of excitement now after this pump. And so going into Ethereum Classic right now looks very risky to me. Now the question is, where could we see potential support? Let's maybe change to the daily chart. And here we can see a few trading ranges where we do have potential supports. So again, this is the Ethereum Classic to Ethereum chart, not the Ethereum Classic to US dollar chart. But still, I wouldn't hold on to it right now. We can easily drop 20% from here. I see this as a very likely scenario. Even 40% wouldn't be out of the ordinary at all. And this is in terms of Ethereum valuation, right? Relative valuation. Now, in terms of US dollars, this loss might be even higher because comparatively small altcoins have a higher volatility compared to the larger cryptos. And thus, when Ethereum goes up, Ethereum Classic is likely to go more up. But when Ethereum is going down, Ethereum Classic is likely to go even more down. So you have these larger price movements, more pronounced volatility, the smaller your altcoin is. And since the general momentum currently in crypto is not positive, prices are currently falling. That's why I would not speculate on buying this dip, at least not at this point in time. I would wait until we find a floor, until we see high volatility again, and until the overall market turns around. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give this a like. If you haven't yet, you can subscribe as well. I publish videos two to three times every week. We've also got a Telegram channel. You can find the link in the video description. And last but not least, we've also got a Facebook group just recently been set up and a Twitter account that you can follow. See you next time. Bye-bye.